This is more of like maybe a $1,900 build, and they're selling it for $2,500. What's up, guys? Welcome to Technology, and today I'm going to be answering the question of are NZXT PCs still overpriced? So they've been overpriced. Uh, they used to not be overpriced. They used to actually be recommendable. They're not really that much that recommendable anymore. So I'm just going to take a quick look, and by that, this is probably going to be a bit of a lengthy video, and we will be looking at the streaming PC series and the starter PC series. I have a PC part picker list for each and every build for like almost the exact parts. And we're just going to see how overpriced, if at all, they are. So I think we should start... Actually, I already have this... Um, No, not H1. I already have the streamer PC ready, the um, bottom of the barrel streaming PC. So let's start with that. Right here. So, this PC is rocking the NZXT H510 case, I'm pretty sure. I think it's the H510, not the H510i. Um, it's also got a run 120mm AIO, which, I guess it's fine, I guess. And it's also rocking a, I think it's a 3060? 2060, this is rocking a 2060. Um, this is a $1600 build, by the way, with about yeah 16 gigs of 3000 megahertz RAM, which it's kind of slow, so... And it also is rocking a B560, B550, I mean, board. And yeah, let's just get into the, like, further into the spec list. So, RTX 2060, Ryzen 5 5600X, which is a pretty, pretty nice middle-of-the-road uh, CPU. And yeah, that's 16 gigs of 3000 megahertz RAM, which for Ryzen, would have liked a little more, especially for $1,600. So, I would have liked to see an improvement on that. And we also have one terabyte of NVMe M.2 storage, which I don't, I mean, it would have been better if it was more of like 500 gigabyte um, SSD and a two or three terabyte hard drive, because this is a streaming PC, so he probably needs a little bit more storage, because chances are they're maybe creating more content other than streaming. So a little more storage would have definitely been nice because I don't really think a terabyte, for, especially once again for $1,600, is enough. What else do we have here? Uh, yes, the Kraken M22 cooler and just a 650 watt bronze power supply. B550 ATX board. Um, XPG Gamex D10. I couldn't really find a Gamex D D10 kit that wasn't extremely overpriced, so I'm just going to be sticking with um, a different kit, which is the exact same, so if not, maybe even a bit better. I don't know. And what else? I think that is about it. So let's get into the PC part picker list. Starting out, we have the Ryzen 5 5600X, obviously, M22 cooler. Um, I went with the B550 Tomahawk ATX AM4 motherboard, simply because it's a pretty nice board, I'm, though I'm pretty sure the one in the picture is, yeah, an Aorus board. So this one is a little bit pricey, though, so I decided to give him the benefit of the doubt on that. And this Corsair Vengeance LPX uh, kit, and it's the same speed, same amount. This uh, Samsung 970 Evo. One terabyte NVMe. What's the? Is it actually specify? No. So yeah, I just went with this one. It's pretty pricey, not really, but it's a little more expensive for a one terabyte SSD. I would probably spend more around like a hundred as to a hundred fifty dollars on one of these. We also have the RTX 2060, which I'm pretty sure. So I looked it, and it was about it was three hundred dollars, three hundred pounds. Okay. So $340. Let me change that real quick. That's my bad. Um, I don't really know how to change it with this limited interface. Um, yeah, I'll just add $40 to the total. The NZXT H510 and a 650 watt 80 plus bronze. This entire PC costs about $1,260 or $1,270. And they price it at 1600 so you can see obviously where the gap comes in because that's not really acceptable going from less than thirteen hundred dollars if you built it yourself and like i don't know waited a little bit for the 2060 to actually be msrp 
to sixteen hundred dollars, which I doubt they're charging four hundred dollars for the build fee and everything else included in the box, which isn't much. So yeah, starting off starting off strong with NZXT, basically just overpricing it by about four hundred dollars, which that's definitely not very good. That's not a good start by any means, as I just said. So that was that. Let's go with. Hmm. Uh, let's just go with the $1,700 NZXT streamer PC. All right, so here we have, once again, we have a 5600X. We have a big jump in graphical performance. We got a 3060 Ti. We're going to big boy numbers now. We still have the same kit of 3000 megahertz RAM at 16 gigs, so that's not the best, once again. And the same SSD of one terabyte, so I don't know, man. I, th I just think we need more storage there. So, yep, we still have the B550 ATX board. Still have the Kraken M22 and the 650 watt bronze. So, the, really, the only upgrade you get here is the GPU. And this is a $1,700 build. So, here we got everything again. We got the MSI B550 again and the same RAM kit from Corsair. Same SSD. Except now we have the 3060 Ti Founders Edition, which goes for $400 if you can find it for MSRP, which I'm pretty sure NZXT gets theirs for MSRP. But if they didn't, it's still 1300 to 1700 So maybe if they get their, their cards for like a few hundred dollars over MSRP, that'll only bring us to like $1,600 when this is 1700 So... I think they get their their cards for a pretty decent price though, so I don't I don't know man that's just that's really that's really bad if that's the case because going from less than fourteen hundred dollars and just adding three hundred dollars to that and just yeah that's not very good so I'm not sure what more to say about these I'm just trying to show you guys how overpriced these are because it's kind of getting ridiculous. Yep, $2,500. So right off the bat, we have a big, big upgrade on the CPU. We're going with a 5th gen Ryzen 7 chip with a 5800X, which is a pretty fast dim chip. And we also have, instead of an M22, we have an X63 um, cooler, so that's that's a pretty big upgrade too. We also, this is what confuses me about this build. So I forgot to do this, but now we have, a, now we have an RTX 3080, which yeah, that's a pretty big jump. We also have these, actually no, we ha we now have a 32 gig kit of 3000 megahertz RAM. Then we have the same one terabyte M.2. What the hell? Come on, we need more storage than a terabyte for $2,500. That's, that's a lot of money for a PC. 750 watt gold power supply, now that's also a nice upgrade. And this is what confuses me the, bo the most about this. They they downgraded the, the board. We, we now only get a B450 when we were originally getting a B550. If anything, you should probably go to, like, I don't know, an X570 and just get a better board. Don't downgrade when you're charging $800 more. So we have, once again, the same SSD. I went for this G-Skill Ripjaws um, kit, which is actually 3200 megahertz, as to 3000, and it's still a pretty decent price. I'm, that's actually a steal, $130 for a 32 gig, 3200 megahertz kit. That's actually, that's amazing. Same H510, this time with the 3080, $700 3080 Founders Edition, and the 750 watt 80 plus gold, and we come out to $1,858. Which I forgot, really kind of forgot to mention. They also think they include a Wi-Fi card, so this is more of like maybe a $1,900 build, and they're selling it for $2,500. This is this is just not a very good look right now. So that's what that's it with the streamer PCs. Let's go over to the regular starter series. All right, starting out pretty fucking weak with the i3 9100F four-core CPU from Intel. Oh boy, this is this is a thousand dollar build, by the way. Um, we also get a 1660 Super along with the same kit of 16 gigs, 3,000 megahertz RAM from XPG. We also get now a 500 gigabyte Western Digital uh, SN550, which is that's a pretty good drive, I guess. And 
I probably would have at least put in a terabyte of hard drive space because why the hell not? It's a terabyte hard drive is like forty dollars. So I would definitely spend that extra forty because we also have a lot of wiggle room in this build. So what else? Now we get an Azrock B B three six five, which eh, it's alright I guess. Maybe for uh what's it? Thousand dollars probably go for a B four sixty instead, but B three six five. I guess you can live with it. And we get a Gamax GTE V2 cooler with a 500 watt bronze power supply. They also include Windows 10 Home, so I guess that's also a thing. But I don't think any of these PCs have been under 100, 100 or $200 overpriced. So even if they do spend that whole fu that whole fucking 100 instead of just getting a key for $20, which they're a big company, I doubt they would do, then there's still more room, so... Here we have the 9100F from Intel and the Gamax GTE V2. This B365 ASRock board and the same Corsair Vengeance kit. The SN550 SSD and the 1660 Super 6 gig Ventus card because I don't think it actually has a regular FE. And yeah, I priced this card at 260 because it might be a little bit more than the regular MSRP of 230 for the 1660 Super. So we also have the H510 and the 500 watt bronze. So here is the final price. This is about $214 of an upcharge. This PC is sitting at $836, which that's definitely an improvement, but still probably shouldn't have that big of a gap. Also with the fact that for the amount of money that you're spending on a 90, 9100F, you could probably just spend the extra like 20 or $30 and get a much better 10th gen i5 chip instead. So that would be something that I would like to see. And here's the Starter Plus. So this time we do get the 10400F. We also get a 2060, that's 2060 Super. We just get a regular 2060. And we also get the same 16 gig kit at 3000 megahertz. It's, it's, a, it's tradition, I guess. And we do get the, oh, it doesn't actually show it's an SN550, but I'll just assume that it is. And we also get a T4's Vulcan C, Vul, Vulcan Z kit now with a B560, so a big upgrade in motherboard too, with the same 500 watt bronze power supply, so that's a pretty decent upgrade, I'd say. So, yep, 10400, Gamax GT V2, same thing. Uh, B560 Tomahawk. I think that price is raised, though. I don't really think it was $199 before, so that'll probably um, help in ZXT's case a little bit. And this cheapo kit of T-Force Vulcan Z RAM, which, once again, 3000 megahertz, 16 gigs, $62. That's a really good deal. And this SM550, the $300 2060 Founders Edition. Maybe they might use a different one. And the H510 with the 500 watt bronze. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a less than $1,000 build, which they are charging for. $1,300 for, so that's that gap is growing again, which, once again, not very good. Probably should go the other way and shrink that gap. I think that's pretty much all we need to say for this PC also. And now on to the final one, the Starter Pro. So starting off with the same 10400F processor, but this time, this time, we have a 3060 which is a pretty pretty decent um, entry-level 1440p card, but I would definitely recommend 1080p for this card mostly. Maybe some games at 1440p. Um, we also have the 3000 megahertz 16 gig kit that we just love to hate. The 1 terabyte uh, SSD storage, which yeah, that is an improvement. I would still like to see a hard drive, though, which we're not getting for some reason. We also have, yes, yeah, this is still the T4's Vulcan C kit. And the SN550 one terabyte model, and the B560 with 500 watt bronze power supply, the same cooler. With this, we're still sticking out with all of these. Um, now we got the SN551 terabyte model, 
um, ignore this, just act like this is a, an RTX 3060, but just add $10 to the price because that's probably that'd probably be a little bit more accurate if you did. We also have the H510 and the 500 watt bronze. This is a $1,000 build with the slight improvement to the graphics card and a slight improvement to storage. So if you're patient enough to be able to actually find a 3060 for MSRP at like a micro center or something, then definitely just suck it up and at least try to learn to build a PC. It doesn't need to be perfect like everyone may tell you. I don't really think I have anything else to say other than maybe some suggestions. I know NCXT is not going to see that because I don't even have 500 subscribers yet. But what I'd like to see is maybe with this PC and really all of them except for the the two the first two starter PCs is a faster kit of RAM. 3000 megahertz with a Ryzen processor or I guess with Intel it's fine but with the Ryzen processors on the streamer PCs, it's just not enough, especially when you're streaming. You'd probably like to have that extra 3600 3, megahertz instead of the 3000. Hmm. Maybe for the, the starter PCs, just cut the price down a bit. It doesn't need to be as high as it is. The um, the actual configurations are, I guess they're they're fine, but maybe also add a a one or two terabyte hard drive because goddamn one terabyte just isn't enough nowadays now i think you could maybe get a few games it's just not enough anymore um i think that's it with the starters let's go with the streamers get the streamer pro up here with this 3000 megahertz on a 1600 plus build is just unacceptable you need to at least get 3200 megahertz 3600 megahertz if you really want to be dandy and other than that, this build isn't horrible for about $2,000, which it is not about $2,000 or $2,200. It is $2,500, which is not very good. I would also like to see maybe a better power supply for a 3080. Definitely, oh shit, I forgot about this. Definitely a better motherboard than a B450 in a $2,500 build. Like, maybe even X570. Oh yeah, and definitely with these builds, more than a terabyte SSD. Maybe even a 2 terabyte M.2, that'd be acceptable. I might make an updated video on this, but for now, I think that is all I have to say. Thank you guys for hopefully watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Comment, like, and subscribe. See you guys.